Hello fellow nymphs. So today I'm going to be telling you a list of things that I wish that I knew when I started painting with watercolour. So number one is paper. This is the most important one on the list by far. Um, if you don't have good paper, it's not going to be a good painting. <laughs> Believe me, um, that said, you can get cheaper papers that will do a similar thing, but it's not quite the same. Um, and if you're like painting on cartridge paper, I am praying for you. <laughs> like, mm. <laughs> uh, I can show you some examples if I find some. Actually, you know what? I'll do this in another video. But paper is very important. You need to be using watercolor paper, not just something you found because likelihood is it's not going to absorb the paint properly. It's just, well, I had one instance actually where I bought uh, Derwent Academy watercolour paper and it was pretty much water resistant. The water just sat on top and did not absorb into the paper. So first of all you're gonna want something thick. Like I'm gonna say 180 GSM and up. Otherwise it's just going to be a disaster. Your paper's gonna go all like gritty and peel off of itself it's not cute um so yeah second of all uh mop brushes so these are my savior do i have one here yes i do so these are mop brushes and you don't want to get cheap stuff um if you're starting out then sure, but I had one similar to this, actually I think I might have it still, and it's like a very cheap mop brush, and you can really tell the difference. So I've used this one a lot more over time, and this is my old one, it's a whole cross synthetic quill. So if you look at the difference there, this one is, I think, I think this is squirrel hair or synthetic squirrel hair, I'm not sure. Uh, Sable's also good for watercolour. Um, but yeah, you can tell. This one's going to hold its shape and hold a lot more water, whereas this one is going to fray over time, as you can see, and it doesn't hold much water, it kind of just runs out. But yeah. And don't do what I did the first time I got one of these. I thought, oh, this is just some packaging. <laughs> and I, I uncurled it. It was sinful. I broke an entire brush. Lucky it was only one of these ones that it was like cheap crap. But yes, I understand what it's like to be on a budget. Hence this. But if you can get a hold of something. A little bit better even if it's like synthetic but it's still from like Neef. Neef usually has the best quality stuff I find. Yes. So number three, paint wheels. 
Okay, paint wheels. Just frisbee those discs into another dimension. You don't need them. I don't know if you've seen them. They're like discs stacked on one another. Each wheel has like multiple pans of colours. They are not good. If that's your first experience with watercolour, as it was mine, you're probably going to hate watercolour. <laughs> They're very dry and they don't have a lot of pigment. They're really terrible. Oh, I just thought I was really bad at art, but they're just awful, awful paints. Don't ever use them. In fact, if you see anything, so here's Rembrandt. You can see how these are in little square pans and they have a little, they're a little bit tacky. Usually a good watercolor paint will be a bit tacky, but these are not the ones that I'm talking about. I'll try and insert a picture on the screen at some point, but they're not good. If it's dry to touch and it's powdery and the powdery stuff comes off on your fingers, then it's definite no-no. Don't even attempt to paint with it. So, when you're starting out, don't use the wheels. Use Cotman's if you can. If you can get a hold of some Cotman's, uh, the Winsor Newton Cotman's paint, those are the best starter paints. I would probably still use them today, honestly. I think they're just wonderful, especially for the price compared to a professional uh, grade watercolor. They're fantastic. I'll chuck in a couple of images of things I've created with them. I started out with... What did I start out with? I started out with De La Rowney, um, like watercolor paints for children. I didn't realize they were for children because I bought them from an art shop. I thought they were student grade, but they were for children. That's what I was doing all of those little portraits with. Um, um, so yeah, that's that one. <laughs> um, so number four is layering versus blocking. So, you're probably, if you're doing an intricate painting that's more, say, realistic, and you're not blocking in colours, like solid colour, and you're having like a gradient, go slow. Start layering. So, you're gonna want to get, build up your colours so that they look more magical. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to just slap on a colour and that's it because it's, it's not great. Um, and, but at the same time, don't be scared of using a little pigment, you know what I'm saying? Don't be scared to be a little bit bold. But yeah, yeah, when I started out, I didn't understand. <laughs> That, that was a thing and I was just like I gotta do it all at once and everything looked terrible <laughs> but if you layer it and have a bit of patience things will turn out better in the end they might take longer but it'll turn out better so number five patience <laughs> uh, don't touch it you'll ruin it and this refers to bleeding if you, mm, this is a big problem of mine because I'm quite impatient, like I want things to be done now. I want to get it done in the afternoon or not at all. <laughs> um, so this is very difficult. If you're putting two colours next to one another and you're like, oh this one's not really dry and it's not fully dry, you know it's not fully dry, you want to touch it, you want to keep going, you want to do the next colour, don't. <laughs> Don't do it, because you know that every time it's going to bleed and it's going to destroy your paint, no amount of blending can salvage that. Like, I'm going to say I know you've done it. <laughs> I do it all the time, calling myself out. But yeah, always be patient. If you can, just like work on parts that aren't touching and get all of those done and then do the rest at a separate time to save time, but yes, okay, 
Now the next one is also to do with patience and self-control and this is don't touch it you'll make it worse. So sometimes with watercolour it's not perfect it just does its own thing it's not something you can control easily and sometimes there are parts that you really want to blend out but you've already put the colour down and you can't go back in and touch it because it's going to the new water's gonna like just blow it up and make it worse and I did this in my last painting <laughs> I'll see if I can find footage actually I probably can't because I deleted it all but there is a part if you look extremely closely actually I've still got it right here but this bit here, I was like, ooh, that's a little bit dark. I'm going to try and blend it out. And then when I added the new water, it just destroyed that whole section, which went really well. So don't do that. <laughs> don't touch it. If you can't blend it out, like if you can't fix something, like touch something up with like the tip of your finger, the brush probably isn't gonna be much more help, especially if you've added water to it. If it's dry, maybe. But just, to be on the safe side, don't touch it. Just layer over it later. Uh, so the next one is gum tape. It's a waste of, it's a waste of everything essentially. It's a waste of time, money, just energy and then it ends up being a waste of paper because it destroys everything so when I was in high school I learnt from my art teacher that you should use gum tape for watercolor and she showed us how to use it like soaking it in the water then putting it over your piece and it's really not that great and like nine times out of ten it's not that effective either like it's nothing you couldn't achieve with some thick masking tape if you and like when you try to get it off it tends to wreck the paper I don't know if there's a secret to using it but it it just destroys your borders you don't get that clean border so always settle for masking tape or something of the kind don't use gum tape no matter what anyone tells you it's just such a waste of everything <laughs> so next one ah okay so the next one eight number eight So if you're working with a watercolour block and you need to take off, as I was the other day, so one of these. So you're working with a watercolour block and you've got to take it off, yeah? So what you're going to want to do is probably use something a little bit sharp, like a paint knife. Uh, but always, always make sure what you're using, like, do a tester first on something else to make sure no colour or anything comes off of it. Because sometimes, like, certain metals or, like, plastics or something, like, certain materials will just, like, rub off some kind of colour and discolour the paper beneath, um, which you don't want to do because directly beneath is a new piece of paper for you to work on so always make sure it's clean and nothing rubs off of it so number nine so this is an optional thing I mean I guess they're all optional but this is like it's not so much a rule as it's helpful like if your style is similar to mine, I guess. But exaggerate with colour. So, often I see a lot of pieces, and like, I'm guilty of this too, but I see a lot of pieces where it's just very flat. So, 
someone, for instance, is like, okay, face is a skin tone, I'm just going to use skin tone and then add black for the shadows. And that's not great. <laughs> if you want, if your aim is to do like some kind of a realistic portrait, hang on one second. Okay, so for instance, this portrait, this self-portrait I did, this is a build-up of different colours that I could see in my reference photograph. Like, sometimes you make them up a bit, but you get a sense as you go as to what you think works and what you think looks good in a shadow or... Art, different artists use different colour palettes and I tend to use a lot of purples and blues in my shadows. So you can see that there, that's just a mass of like purples, oranges, blues, building into these yellows and oranges here as you go up. So it's not as straightforward as just using two colours and building shadows from that. Unless of course you're like, I don't know, doing a painting of a kettle or something. In that case you probably only need like two or three colours at most, maybe even one. But skin tones always, always try and build up some kind of a colour, exaggerate, have a bit of fun with it. And that leads us to, I think this is the last one, uh, the last one is throw out that white pan. <laughs> Just throw it out. It's not your friend. It might claim to be, but this, this guy isn't your friend. He claims to want to help you out. You might have made a mistake, you've gone too dark with something and you're like, ah, just go over with a sneaky bit of white. No, don't. <laughs> it's gonna look so bad. <laughs> it's not helpful. If you're gonna do it, use ink or like slightly watered down gouache or something. Don't use the white from the watercolor set. It's not even good for mixing colors. It's just not. It kind of just doesn't exist or it creates this really flat tone that just isn't nice. Personally, I really don't like it and I somehow trick myself into believing that it'll save, it'll save something if I've made a mistake, but it won't. <laughs> if anything, it just makes it worse. So yeah, just throw that away. Alright, so that concludes the video. Um, I don't think I've got anything else that I remember about this. Um, I hope you're all staying safe and that the new year is treating you well. If you liked this video, maybe give me a cheeky like and subscribe. Maybe comment down below, let me know if there's anything else you want my expertise on, my professional opinion on, what am I saying? Um, yeah, so bye guys. Frisbee them. <laughs> wow, where am I going with this?